friends, the next part of our sculpture project, we are going to make our figure chip sculpture stand. The last class, you all finished putting together your sculpture by twisting pipe cleaners together to make a simplified skeleton. You made a torso, you attached arms, legs, you made a spine, a bottom of a rib cage, and you attached your head. Now, the first thing you need to do is you're going to get a small piece of cardboard. It could be anywhere between 6 inches by 6 inches to 12 inches by 12 inches. And you're going to get a black marker. And with your black marker, you're going to write your name on the bottom of your board. So I'm writing my name, Mrs. PJ. And you're going to write your class, which is 5. And I'm writing infinity because I learned forever. Now, I'm going to flip my board over. Then I'm going to take my pipe cleaner skeleton and I'm going to bend it in the position in which I intend. Remember, the position that you bend your sculpture in has to match the drawing that you have in your sketchbook. I've decided, just for the sake of this exercise, so you all can see what I'm doing, I'm going to make the exact same position. So, I'm going to make sure I have one leg down. And my leg that's down, I need to make sure that it doesn't swing easy, so I need to tighten it at the joint. So tighten it at its hip. And then, since I need it to be straight, I'm going to make sure this leg is as straight as I possibly can get it. Then I'm going to bend the foot at the end. So I am bending the foot, as you can see. So I've bent the foot. Now, I am going to bend the torso so that my back is arched. Move these things out of the way. I bend my torso so that my back is arched and that my other leg is behind me. Then I will bend that knee and I will bend the other foot slightly. And also tighten this leg at the torso. So then when I place it on my platform, it will stand like this. While I have it on my platform, I am going to use my marker and I'm going to place a mark at the length of the foot on the platform. On that mark, we are going to squeeze hot glue and that is how we will attach our pipe cleaner skeleton to the board. Squeeze hot glue out squeezing hot glue directly on that marker line. Then I'm going to place my foot or whatever part that should be touching my base or touching the ground on my sculpture. I'm going to place my foot directly in the hot glue and then I'm going to place or squeeze more hot glue across the entire top surface. Bend this a little closer so you can see it. But I'm going to squeeze more hot glue all the way across the top surface of the foot. Then, after I'm done making sure that I have hot glue all the way around the top and the bottom of the foot, I'm going to hold my sculpture in the hot glue until the hot glue has cooled down. So I waited five minutes and now my hot glue is cool enough so that I can touch it. Um, now we are going to begin plastering the part of our body that touches the base. For my sculpture, one leg is touching the base so I need to plaster the foot and I need to plaster the whole leg and I need to pat plaster the lower part of the torso. So in order to do that, I have my plaster strips and yes, my sculpture might flop over right now and that's okay. I have my plaster strips and I'm going to cut them about medium size, maybe about two inches wide. So I've cut all of my plaster strips. Now I'm going to plaster my whole base. I have this bucket of water. There's no plaster in this. I mean, no paper mache in this. is just water. And I'm going to take one strip at a time and I'm going to submerge it in the water. And first, I'm going to plaster across the foot, and I'm going to smooth it down as best as I can. And then I'm going to take an additional plaster strip, I'm going to submerge it, and I need to make sure that it overlaps part of the plaster that's already there. 
I'm going to do that for my whole base. And I want to make sure that I plaster all the way around that foot and that ankle as I am covering the base to help secure my skeleton to my base of my sculpture. Also, while you're plastering, it's important to make sure that your dry plaster strips do not get wet before you're ready to use them. Because as soon as plaster strips get wet, they start their chemical process and they go from being wet to hard in a matter of minutes and it's hard to get wet plaster to stick to dry plaster that's in the middle of its processes. Alright so I have completely covered my base now I'm going to begin wrapping around my ankle all the way up the leg across the bottom portion of my torso. I'm going to do this as quickly as I can. I'm going around my ankle another time to secure my ankle. Then I'm getting another strip and I'm making sure that this strip overlaps my ankle as I go up my leg. So I wrap it around my ankle again. goes all the way up as far as the strip will wrap up the leg. Then I will get an additional strip, submerge it completely in the water, and keep wrapping around up that leg, being mindful of however this leg dries, it's how it's going to stay. So I want to keep my leg as straight as I possibly can. If that's your intention to have a straight leg. If you want your leg to be bent, you need to make sure it's bent in the position that you want it to be in. Mm -hmm. Making sure that I'm still overlapping. You don't want any gaps in this plaster. And making sure that you're also smoothing down the plaster so that it can harden as one solid unit instead of separate pieces. The solidifying of the plaster is what holds your sculpture together. Now that I have gotten to my hip, I need to make sure that I wrap the lower half of my torso. I am not wrapping my leg today. I am wrapping the lower half of my torso because I need it to harden and hold my leg in its position. So just like our muscles that go across our hip and our leg bones to hold them together, these plaster strips are going to hold our leg together for our figurative sculpture. Make sure that I wrap it over the front and the back. Now that I've covered my whole leg, I'm going to lift my sculpture carefully to make sure that everything is covered the way I want to. I'm going to add an additional strip right here to wrap beneath um, my torso or around the pelvis like a diaper. Submerge that strip and I wrap it around the front and under the pelvis just like I was wrapping a diaper on a baby. Also, I want to make sure that I cover the lower half of the torso on the back of my sculpture as well. I am not covering my second leg. The reason why I'm not covering my second leg is that when you are making a figurative sculpture, it's important that the lower half of the sculpture is heavier than the top half. And if you wrap this leg that's in the air, then that's going to make it heavy in the middle of the air before it's time. You have to take your time when you're making these sculptures. You can't rush your process. Now, 
Before we let the plaster set all the way, we need to make sure that our body is standing the way we want it to be. Like, is the angle of your torso and your leg in the position you want it to be? For example, if I wanted this standing straight up, I would have to bend it straight up right now. Right now, my sculpture is standing almost in the position I need it to be. I need to make sure my leg is just a little bit straighter. And I can still straighten it out because it's not 100% hard. And now, I am going to grab two paint bottles. They're a little plastery from other, paint, other sculptures. But I am going to take one paint bottle and rest it beneath the chest. Of my sculpture. Then I'm going to take another paint bottle and place it behind the leg of my sculpture. And I'm going to straighten out the leg as best as I can because I want that leg straight. When I'm satisfied with the position of the body and I think that the bottles will stay in their place, I will let my sculpture rest for between 10 to 15 minutes, and then I will check to see if it's standing on its own. After 15 minutes or so, remove your props to see how well your sculpture stands. As you notice, my sculpture, it stands mostly, but it leans a little bit. I need to check to see where the wobbly parts are, and I can feel that it is wobbly in the middle of my sculpture. The bottom portion of my sculpture is pretty firm. But it's wobbly right in here in the middle. It's probably an area that I need to overlap a little more. So I'm going to take some more plaster and go right over top and cover it so that it can be strong and firm. And then I will wait an additional 15 minutes. All right, friends, now we're ready to remove our bottles. And when you remove your props from your sculpture, if it stands and doesn't wobble and mine does not wobble, then your sculpture is ready to go for the next phase. It is a good idea to go ahead and let your sculpture continue to sit in its freshly plastered, plastered phase for another 24 hours before you begin adding your next layer of material to your sculpture.